Let's take a look at some of the shrubs now that are nitrogen fixing. Gumi, where are you? Gumi, Gumi, where are you? Here's one of the shrubs that we use. It's called Shefferdia argentea or buffalo berry. Too bad it's not in bloom today because they smell so amazing. One of the things often the nitrogen fixers, they really do have a lot of fragrance when they're in bloom. They attract insects and bees from a long distance. Very important for beneficial insects. That's one of their big jobs. You see the little fruit or fruit starting. Just note one thing that the, see the leaf color? See how, well, do you see that? How they're kind of gray? Well, that's a characteristic. They're a real prairie plant. And once they have gray leaves, that's a, a strategy that many plants use to reduce the amount of evaporation. They have a lighter leaf. It doesn't heat up as much. They can grow in drier climates. And since we are on really sandy soil, I thought they would work well and they've been growing well. One of their characteristics, like some of the nitrogen fixing shrubs, is to sucker. So here's the mother plant. Here's one of the suckers. Here's another one of the suckers. So they sucker, which is great if you want more plants. You'll have more just by digging them up and multiplying these suckers. One shrub that's been doing quite well, and I'm impressed with it, and we've tried it in the past. Just as a note, go see that how to try plants video. Oh, that's what this is, Eliagnus umbilata, autumn olive. Because we have tried it in the past and they never worked. Now that the orchard's grown up and starts to give protection to new plants we put in, they are doing really well. So we'll see how well they do. What's their role? So a lot of them are on test. We're trying them out. I wish I knew exactly how much of a soil improver each one was, but you know what? It's the overall effect of trying them, seeing what they do, learning about them. That's the same for every plant. You got to give it a chance and don't be so quick to say, oh, it's a weed. I know this is Eliagnus. They can be quite invasive in some places. But you know what? They're really just trying to do a job of make the soil better. Do you, you don't like that? You don't want it to make your soil better? Gumi, Gumi, where are you? Oh, where, oh, where are my caragana? Oh, where, oh, where have they gone? Where's the caragana? Oh, here's one. Not Caragana, but here's another nitrogen fixer. So here is one of the sea berries. And there's lots of different ones. Sea berry, fantastic. Out of the shrubs, I think I would say this is my number one nitrogen fixing shrub. No, oh, it's the time I just stepped on. You think, yeah, I don't know. Sea berry? Did I say sea berry? Was it sea berry? Sea berries, a great one. As long as you get the thornless ones. So the Russian selections, amazing. Try to get them, please, because once you get sea berry and now they're not sea buckthorn, like totally thorny, that's a big plus. So these guys give beautiful, they're not this one, because this one's not old enough yet, but they give, see the leaves? What did I say about leaves that are a little gray, grayish? Well, they're great for very dry sites. If you have a very poor soil and you think not much is growing, try sea berry. They'll grow in a very salty environment too, I'm pretty sure, because that's why they're called sea. See? Sea, S-E-A, sea berry, grow by the sea. So the Russian selections being thornless are really ones to consider. But if you ever get the fruit, wow, the fruit, 
Oh, wow. It make a jam. <gasps> sea berry jam. Mm -hmm. I gotta go have breakfast. Here's one of the Russian selections, or sorry, here's one of the Ukrainian selections of sea berry. And this one, as other trees, as I said, for the honey locust anyway, there is both male and female plants. So if you want to have these sea berry and get fruit, you have to have both male and female plants. Where, oh, where is my caragana? Caragana, here you are. So here's the caragana. Oh, look at that, little pods are out. The little pods, see these little pea pods? They're like little pea pods. Another name for them is Siberian pea shrub because they look like peas. I know some of you are all about, oh, yeah, this is edible. And there is a difference between edible and wonderful. Edible to me is survival food. If you find that, you know, you we're really in tough, tough times and we just need to eat something, sure, you can eat them. But in terms of, hmm, they're actually way too, here, let me try a smaller one. Some of you will probably say, yeah, you have to do it this way or that way. But listen, some of these are edible, they're not poisonous, but they're not a wow for me. Gumi, where are you? Why are you hiding from me? Show yourself. This one is called New Jersey tea. I guess you could make a tea out of it. I've never looked it up. And well, it's it's dies back in our climate every few every few years anyway. I don't know. It's here. We're trying it. We're trying a lot of things, but that's another nitrogen fixer. How good is it? I don't know. Just like a lot of these plants. We know the pasture ones, how much nitrogen they actually improve. So your clovers and your alfalfa, those are known. The clovers, yeah, clover, white clover, red clover, alce clover, crimson clover. Those are known how much actual nitrogen they bring to the soil per area, per acre, per hectare, whatever. The trees and shrubs, hmm, not so well known. That is a, an important research area to confirm what we can observe and see, yeah, that this does work, does improve the soil, but we don't really know how well it works. So if you're a researcher and you're interested and you're looking for a subject, start looking at how much soil improvement do some of these trees and shrubs actually bring. It's an important area. We need to know. Maybe I should call this video the hunt for the gummies. I almost forgot this one. Lead plant, amorpha. Like most prairie plants, it needs full sun. And right now this one's growing underneath this, which I'll get to in a minute. A nice example of a lead plant. You can see it's getting ready. It has these beautiful purple flowers. This one's getting ready to, to bloom, doing nicely. Stays pretty low. Fixes nitrogen. Goes well with your other trees and shrubs. I'm coming, Gumi. I saw you. I'm coming. Gumi! <laughs> <sighs> Finally found the Gumi. I think I have more than one, but Gumi is a plant that I've tried a few times. They never worked. We tried propagating them and then we replanted them and that didn't work. But the orchard has matured now that it provides enough protection for these. And you see the, some of the stems freeze back. So they're borderline. Go see that video on testing a plant. They're borderline in our zone, in our hardiness zone. And so we tried it. I want to see, I, I want to taste the gumi. I've never tasted a gumi. But it is another nitrogen fixer in the right conditions. And remember, and I've said that in another video somewhere, 
you want to grow an orchard of weeds. You say, ah, I don't want to grow an orchard of weeds. Well, you want to grow plants, trees, shrubs, perennials that grow like weeds that you don't have to do anything and they do so well. That's really the ultimate goal. And so nitrogen fixers are just one of those plants that, not plants, group of plants, that will help you reach a weed-like, easy orchard or planting in your garden. Use them, take advantage of their characteristics, their hard-working plants. And although you might not like them, they're trying to do something. They actually are trying to improve your soil. They were preparing it for the next wave. If it's a shrub, they're probably preparing the soil for the next wave, which becomes trees. If they're perennials, they may be preparing the soil for the shrubs or the trees as well. And so nitrogen fixes are really a great ally. Learn about them, learn to use them, and really just try them. Just start, put some in, See how they do for your trees. Thanks for watching. Intrigued? Check out the virtual tour of the permaculture orchard. Have trees already? Pruningcourse.com. Subscribe, please. Check out some of the other videos or playlists. There's more to come. Stay tuned. Bye. Hope you enjoyed this journey about nitrogen fixers. See you next week. Thanks for watching. Bye. Sheferdia argentia or or what is it?